Hello friends, in the last session we have understood the concept of filing and seen the conventional and modern methods of filing with its advantages and limitations to the organization. We would now continue to understand some other methods of filing with its importance. The other methods of filing, suspension filing, it can be seen from the figure that this is an improvement over vertical filing cabinets when folders are stored vertically in a drawer there is a tendency for them to slip or slide down giving a disorderly appearance to the drawer and making it difficult for a person to locate a file that has slipped to the bottom of the drawer out of sight to overcome this difficulty the suspension system of filing was introduced the suspension folders are fitted with metal bars suspended on a rectangular metal frame which is fitted inside the filing drawer the top metal bar of each folder carries a movable index title tab which serves the purpose of visible indexing as well. The advantages of this system are the folders can be moved freely backward and forward. The sagging of the files in the drawer is avoided. It is a visible system of filing and is an improvement other blind filing system. However, suspension filing has disadvantages. They are the folders and cabinets are costly. It takes too much space, at least 25% more than the vertical filing system. The popularity of this filing system, however, indicates that its advantages far outweigh its disadvantages. The lateral filing. This is a variation of vertical filing. This method is strictly vertical in the sense that papers etc. are stacked upright as clearly illustrated in the figure. The term lateral is used to mean that records are arranged side by side, usually on shelves or racks, the pockets having index strips on the visible ends of the files. Ordinarily, almiras, cabinets, etc. can be used for lateral filing, which has become very popular because of the advantages it offers. The advantages are, it saves space, it provides fuller visibility, greater filing height can be utilized up to 2 meters, folders can be quickly located, it costs up to 5% less than vertical or suspension filing does and it offers an unlimited scope for expansion. The open shelf filing under this method, as seen clearly, open shelves are used in libraries as they provide for the storage of folders. In open shelves, filing may be done horizontally or vertically and any method of classification may be adapted. Open shelves may be done up to the height of ceilings 9 feet or 10 feet and ladders may be provided for operators to make it possible for them to get at them. This system of filing offers advantages which are similar to those offered by lateral filing but it requires more space and a dust free area 
for the protection of documents. Open shelf filing is commonly used in libraries for placing books in open shelves. This is also used by banks, insurance companies, government offices and other institutions. The visible filing which is also called card filing. This is a popular filing method in the West though some big organizations in this country also use this system. These files show all the information relating to them, example, the names, subjects, numbers, etc., which are recorded on the edges of the cards. The cards may be kept in open trays or revolving racks or filing cabinets as seen in the figure. A variation of this is rotary cards filing equipments in which cards are attached to a belt or a series of rings which surround the core of the rotating wheel. Visible card filing equipments offer many advantages. With the help of this method, referring can be made at a great speed. New papers, etc. can be easily inserted. Instant attention can be drawn to vital information by using signals and tabs. It may be used for a variety of purpose, example for maintaining records of inventories, customers, suppliers, employees, shareholders, jobs in progress, cost analysis, sales contracts, etc. Visible card files may either be horizontal or vertical depending on the position in which cards are kept. Now, let us have a look at the latest filing devices to begin with the motorized files. With the development of the science and the art of office management, new and modern office filing equipment and methods have emerged to cater to the changing requirements of an office. The latest of these is the motorized filing equipment which has an electrically operated console. The operator sitting at a desk presses the button and the relevant file is presented to the view. Usually trays of reference cards are suspended around the drum as seen in the figure so that on the depression of a button the drum revolves just sufficiently to bring the tray required within the reach. This system reduces fatigue on the part of the operator by allowing him to be continuously seated. It increases the speed of reference and cross-reference. It accommodates hundreds of thousands of cards in the filing system. The system, however, calls for a huge investment, though it is very economical to operate if a big organization installs it. The next one is reciprocating files. As illustrated in the figure, reciprocating file is mechanically constructed in such a way that the file tracks move along a route according to the requirements of clerical workflow. The clerk remains comfortably seated and the files can be moved forward and backward as required. One type of reciprocating file trays mounted on horizontal racks and fitted with roller bearings to make it easy to slide each card file rack to the operator. The advantages of this type of files are it reduces employee fatigue, it eliminates wastage of time, it increases the efficiency of clerical staff. 
the microfilm files. Microfilming is the photographic process of retaining information given in office documents and records as seen in the figure. The record is first photographed on film at reduced size. Then the film is developed to serve as permanent record. Under this system, films are prepared from the original document and then placed in file cabinet specially built for microfilm. When the record is again required, the film clerk locates the subject on the film, places the film on the projector, reader and locates the references. The film can also be enlarged to a large size. Depending upon the type of document, its purpose, length or the retention and frequency of retrieval, records may be microfilmed in the various formats. The first format being roll microfilm. Here, documents are filmed serially on a roll of film, normally 16 mm or 35 mm width and 100 feet long. The next one is an aperture card. It is a card containing a rectangular hole to which a single microfilm frame is affixed. The microfilm is held in place by adhesive or other means. The type of card more commonly used as a carrier is a punched card. Microfish is another format in microfilm files. In this technique, a number of images are exposed onto a single sheet. A standard microfish sheet is 5 by 6 inches and contains 96 images. However, other sizes are also frequently used. And the last one is jacketed microfilm. This is a means of converting roll microfilm into a flat film. Frame or series of frames taken on a roll of film and cut and placed in jackets or sleeves. Microfilm files offer certain advantages. It saves considerable amount of storage space. For instance, 5 lakh average size records can be filmed on 100 reels of film which can be accommodated into two small filing drawers. It thus saves as much as 99% of the original filing space required. Microfilming can serve as a device of transferring the documents for higher retention period. If a copy of the record is needed, a photographic device on the reader will permit the copy to be made. The only drawback of the microfilm filing system is that it is expensive and might not be within the reach of many offices which do not have the financial capacity. The latest and the most used method of filing these days is computer filing. Computers are capable of storing large quantities of information which may be retrieved in graphical form like drawings or graph as well as in alphabetical and numerical characters. The matter stored in the computer may be brought to screen within a matter of seconds and a printout may be obtained. The use of a computer as a means of filing and retrieving text is restricted due to the fact that the original records and documents have to be stored in a filing system for future reference and to meet legal requirements. 
Moreover, this system is expensive if all the information stored must be specially copied in a computer through a scanner in order to place it on record. The application of computer filing may be economical only where the original material is typed on word processing machines and a magnetic recording is made on the computer. For the reasons the use of computer filing is restricted to technical data and reference libraries etc. Computer filing involves a huge cost of filing. The cost of filing involves factors that need to be taken into account. The filing equipment used that is the cost of the computer. Equipment for transporting the documents. The rental value of the space occupied by the files. The depreciation of filing equipments. The cost of accessories that is boxes, cards, folders, forms and reference cards etc. The interest on investment, lighting, heating, air conditioning etc. Expenses for the room used for filing, cost of preservation of the documents in the files. These factors are unavoidable but necessary in the computer filing as it is one of the effective method of filing. Computer filing today is also known as e-filing. E-filing that is electronic document management is mostly known as electronic filing. There is nowadays a definite shift away from using paper documents to using automated equipments. This mainly refers to using computer to file documents. Computers are more sophisticated and the storage and retrieval of information takes place faster. The storage of information also takes up less space. When a computer ID is used for the storage of documents, the document as such is not stored but rather the information it contains. The information is stored in the computer on magnetic disks by means of electronic impulses. Documents are stored in files and folders. As far as equipment and time are concerned, an automated system is expensive to develop. Costs will be recovered at a later stage as a result of saving of salaries and a better information system. The maintenance of such a system will largely depend on the staff in charge. Their knowledge of and proficiency in the use of electronic equipment, devices and systems will play a determining role. The training of staff in the use of automated equipment devices and systems is essential as special skills are required. Usually the suppliers of automated equipment devices and systems such as computers and software packages provide training. Consultants also render training services and advice. Although all the mentioned people contribute to the training process, it remains the task of the management to select and place staff in such a manner that the right person is appointed in the right position. So far, we have understood the various methods of filing. Now, let us proceed to understand the importance of filing with respect to storage of filing and retrieval of filing. The importance of filing in an organization arises from the fact that large number of papers and documents cannot be preserved 
and handled without proper arrangement. All future planning is done by executives on the basis of past performance and records. Certain records are maintained under the provisions of various statutes. In business correspondence, a reference is made to the previous letters, documents, etc. In purchasing, an order may have to be followed up or a repeat order may have to be placed in which a reference is made to the old records. In the event of a dispute, records provide documentary evidence. A systematic preservation of various types of information for various purposes is made possible only by a good filing system. Now, this understanding helps us to derive the functions of a filing system. As we know, the process of filing is concerned not only with the sorting of records but also with their systematic arrangement so that they can be traced easily when asked for. Filing therefore has major functions. One, library function by sorting and arranging the records for future reference. Two, administrative function by maintaining records of previous decisions and thereby helping the executive in framing business policies. 3. Information function by maintaining, protecting and supplying the various types of information for various uses and purposes. 4. Historical function by preserving in a systematic manner, the important records bearing on the progress of the organization. The advantages of filing. An efficient filing system thus provides the certain advantages to the organization like increased efficiency. A good filing system enables the staff to handle correspondence properly and without delay. It saves time and brings efficiency to the office operations. As a consequence, it enhances the reputation of the organization among outsiders. Ready reference. Many a times, customers repeat their past orders. Follow-up measures may also have to be taken when a letter has to be sent or an order placed. Filing in such cases serves the purpose of ready reference. Protection. A good filing system protects the documents against possible loss or damage. Planning. Past records provide valuable information for the formulation of business policies for the future. Old records serve as the basis for future action. Quick decisions. Filing of records enables the executives to take correct and quick business decisions at the proper time. Better control. The process of control is greatly facilitated by filing. A check is kept on incoming and outgoing letters and the letters requiring immediate attention are disposed of quickly. Legal compliance. Filing fulfills legal obligations by keeping those documents and records which are required to be preserved under the provisions of the law. Evidence. Old records are useful as evidence in a lawsuit or in providing titles to assets and even to the existence of the organization itself. Storage and retrieval of filing. It is not only important to know how and when the records need to be filed. It is also necessary to know to manage and control the place of filing. 
if no control is exercised, documents will get lost or fall into the wrong hands. The person responsible for the records should do everything in his or her ability to guard the documents. It is always a good policy to grant authorized personal access to the documents. It is also important to place a restriction on the number of people that have access to the documents. The control of records entails the control of access to classified material, control of filing storage, the control of information retrieval and the control of the destruction of files. Each of these is briefly discussed. The control of access to classified material. Some records are irreplaceable. If these fall into the wrong hands, it can damage the organization. Special precautions should therefore be taken to ensure that this does not happen. One method to control access to classified material is to keep the filing cabinet locked at all times. Alternatively, classified can be stored at a bank, locked in a safe or put on a microfilm. In electronic filing, a password can be installed on the document. In addition to this, special filing procedures can also be used. The control of record storage. File records immediately when dealt with. Always file the records chronologically. Maintain the index. The control of information retrieval. Make use of labels and guides. In the case of centralized filing, establish a procedure for information retrieval. Make use of outcards once documents have been removed. The control of destruction of files. The physical space to store all the files will not always be sufficient. Every organization, therefore, will have to destroy files on a regular basis. In any event, it is necessary to file only essential, important and useful documents. Other solution to the space problem is to clean the files regularly. Make use of a schedule to do this. When doing this, take the type of records into consideration. Example, catalogs can be thrown away if the new ones arrive. Essential and important records should be stored permanently and never be destroyed. The recommended time for storing essential files should be determined by each organization. To destroy records, use a paper shredder. There are usual time periods for the retention of the files. One year, all correspondence, example, unsuccessful job applications, five years, salary adjustment schedules, industrial training documents, tax receipts, guaranteed documents, six years, cancelled checks and contracts with clients and suppliers, 7 years, all manpower documents, 10 years, tax receipts sent in by stock brokers, 12 years, shared transactions from listed companies, 15 years, accounting documents and registers, indeterminable period of time, permanent registration documents, personal documents of senior staff. Essentials of a good filing system. The maintenance of an efficient filing system is one of the complex problems in an office. There is no one ideal filing system and no one ideal type of filing equipment which will meet the requirements of every record in every office. However, a good filing system should have the characteristics like compactness. The filing system 
should be compact. In other words, it should not take up unnecessary space because modern office space is costly. Accessibility. The records should be readily accessible. The system should be such as to allow the making of insertions without disturbing the existing order of files. The importance of accessibility is greater in situations where records are to be written. Economy. The filing system should be economical. It should be economical in time, space, money and operation. The cost of installation and operation of the filing system should be as low as possible. In this connection, the points should be noted. Filing equipment should be such as occupies the least possible space but can accommodate the maximum number of files. The equipment should not be so costly as to be beyond the reach of the organization. The selected equipment should save the time of the persons engaged in filing operations. The period for which the document is to be retained should be carefully determined so that unwanted records may be disposed of in order to economize space. Simplicity. The filing system should be simple to understand and operate. It should not involve elaborate procedures and complicated functions. But usefulness should not be sacrificed to simplicity. Therefore, any filing system which is simple and serves its purpose is the best. Flexibility. The filing system which is adapted should be elastic so that it can expand or contract with needs. There should be sufficient scope for the expansion of the filing arrangements following an increase in the records of the business. Easy location. Records should be easily located when required for reference with minimum delay possible. But it is not proper to incur an unduly high expenditure to achieve this purpose. Cross-reference. Cross-reference may be necessary so that a document under different headings, particularly correspondence, may be easily located. The filing system should facilitate cross-reference to save time. Retention. The system should be such that life records only are kept for the requisite period of time. Dead records should be discarded without too much disturbance. There should be a specific retention policy for this purpose. Classification. The filing system should be supported by a proper system of classification. A proper system of classification helps in inserting as well as locating the documents in the files. For this purpose, too many miscellaneous files should be avoided. Minimum misfiling. The chief difficulty is not in filing but in finding. Misfiling causes delay in the location of the desired document. Certain steps should be taken to prevent the misfiling. There should be set rules for filing known to all the employees of the filing section. The filing system should be supplemented by a well-designed index plan to help in a quick location of files. Out guides should be maintained to indicate the documents which have been withdrawn and the person or department withdrawing them. A well-designed system of requisitioning the files should be adapted. Example, whether a requisition for files should be made by names or subject. No one should be permitted to have access to files except the authorized file clerks. Safety. The filing system 
should be one under which the safety of the documents from insects, dust, water, fire, theft, etc. is ensured. Steps should be taken to ensure safety. They are use of fireproof almiras may be made available for valuable documents. Entry to the filing section should be restricted only to persons of the filing section. The issue of files should be made only on the basis of requisitions. A proper procedure should be adapted to ensure the return of the issued files or documents. So friends, in this session, we have tried to understand the other methods of filing, the functions and importance of filing and the essentials of a good filing system. We have also understood the storage and retrieval of filing when needed for future reference. Thank you.